Hello. When I lived in Japan last year, I went to some places. I did some things. I saw some things, man. One of the things that I did, one of the places I went to, was the Yamazaki Whiskey Distillery in um, Kyoto Prefecture, Osaka Prefecture. I'm not entirely sure because the uh, I don't know the pref. I, you can't really say state line because it's not a state, but the the prefecture line is right there. I actually saw that sign. So I'm not sure if it's technically in Osaka or, or Kyoto, but uh, anyway. Now the reason I went there, pretty much, I first I noticed that it existed at all because I was going to Osaka one day, and I took the uh, Hankyu line, I, I think it was, and one of the stations that uh, we passed by was called the Yamazaki, and I was like. Hmm, Yamazaki, uh, like the whiskey, and then yes, it was. I saw uh, from the train the distil distillery in the background, in the, close to the mountain, which turned out to be a mountain called Tennozan. So I thought, okay, well, I'm gonna stop there the next time, uh, sometime, because uh, yeah, I want to see that. And the reason I want to see that, I wanted to see that pretty much, is because of a certain little game series, Yakuza, and. I'm not much of a drinker. I'm I don't drink much alcohol at all actually. In my lifetime I'm 33 years old. I've been drunk maybe 5 times at the most. And only of those 5 times maybe I think once or twice it was enough to have a, a headache the next day. Not like a full hangover really, but at least a headache. And I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> uh, so I really um I don't like to drink cuz I don't uh, it, well if I drink I try to drink not so much so I don't have any problems the other next day because I meh. yeah I vomited and one, once that was the other time that was uh, bad um, not fun it's not worth it honestly even though the uh, the buzz is enjoyable uh, it's not worth it uh, that that's for me also for me uh, as my personal just personality is uh, taste is king for me I love like uh, stuff that tastes good and alcohol typically doesn't taste good so I don't really drink, I don't like beer, I don't like wine, even though a little bit of red wine could, you know, maybe be okay, just a sip, like, a, uh, you know, just slap a beret on me and I'm a Frenchman. Um, whiskey, too strong, uh, vodka can, you know, if you mix it out, it can be okay, but uh, cider I, drink, I do drink, which, um, of course, in the culture we live in makes me come off as a uh, homosexual, <laughs> or at least it makes people look at me a little oddly because like everyone drinks beer uh, or something stronger but cider is the thing that women drink apparently but that's the one of the only things that actually tastes good that and a few drinks uh, like stuff that's mixed like in Japan I uh, continually had this one called Cassis Orange which is just some kind of um, fruit uh, based uh, um, alcohol just mixed with juice pretty much and it doesn't it didn't it wasn't strong at all it barely tastes like tasted like alcohol, it just tasted like juice pretty much, which made it completely fine for me to drink. I do love soda, which is also why I do drink like uh, wine coolers, uh, Bacardi Breezer and uh, those uh, Smirnoff Ice and those those kind of things. But once you get above like 5% alcohol, it's like, uh, white wine I think is the worst. Champagne is just white wine with uh, carbonate and carbonation, with carbonation. So no, I just, no, I don't like it. But I am, however, interested in the world of alcohol. Ironically enough, it is an interesting world. Uh, what it does to people and uh, how they seem to uh, live by it. And um, the the different brands, you go into a liquor store or the liquor store in Sweden because we have, uh, there's like a, uh, we have a monopoly instead of, I think it's, I don't know if it's state run or not. I've, I don't, haven't actually figured that out. But we only have one liquor store. In regular sh shops, you can buy stuff up to like 2.2. 25 percent or something but if you want any harder stuff you have to go to the liquor store and i've been there plenty of times uh, following with my um uh, with parents friends and that kind of stuff so i've been you know walking around uh waiting and then looking at the, the wines the the liquors and of course being a little uh, allured to the the hard stuff because it's like yeah that's what hard uh, cool people drink and one of the you get the images of in your mind of all kinds of um uh, drinks and beer, of course, is just the, the, the drink of the common man. Uh, but whiskey is the drink of a man's man. 
right? Uh, cowboys and just tough guys in general. And then I played the Yakuza series, and there you have real drinks uh, in the real bar in the bars, and they have little descriptions and stuff, and it was just cool to recognize stuff. And then it's like, okay, so you have some Japanese uh, stuff, and the one that seemed to come up the most, and it was also in the hostess clubs uh, available, was Yamasaki, uh, specifically Yamasaki Twelve Years, and so yeah, um, but the Yamasaki was like a, apparently a big drink, a big big thing in Japan, as made of course by Suntory, and I've heard about Suntory even before Yakuza, because even though I hadn't seen the movie, the uh, movie Lost in Translation was, the, the, the Suntory time was uh, a thing, uh, more intensity. So yeah, so I went to, the long story short, <laughs> I went to the brewery, uh, distillery actually, a brewery is for beer, distillery is for whiskey. Uh, so yeah, it was in by the station Yamazaki, pretty close to there. Uh, I went into a you could take a like a guided tour with uh, people I think spoke English uh, um, for uh, one thousand five hundred yen or something. But I just went in for free. Just went around. You can just go around uh, a separate. You can go if you take the guided tour. You can go into the actual distillery. If you go in for free, you can go into the the sort of uh, mini museum that they have in a separate building which is what I went for. And uh, I, when I went in there also I picked uh, this up, which is sort of a little uh, booklet with uh, history and stuff. So uh, looking in that, and then I'll just be looking in that a bit, and then uh, show you some pictures from inside while I'm reading, pretty much. But I won't read the whole thing, obviously, but still. Yes, it was founded, uh, Suntory was founded by Shinjiro Tori. I think that's the, where the Tori comes from. Also, fun uh, story about the Tori. They have a whiskey called Tori uh, that's sold in regular stores. That's um, one of their cheaper brands. And I thought, I didn't, because I'm stupid, I didn't understand uh, that Duke Nukem Forever meant forever um, until like, you know, uh, 2013 or something. So, yeah. Uh, the Tori, I thought. That's made by Suntory, it says on the bottle, but I didn't know that I thought it was Tory as in Suntory. I thought it was Tory as is inspired by the British po uh, party, political party. So, yeah, but anyway, uh, I saw that. And Tory in the, the Tory in Suntory is basically is based on his name. That's why. And then the sun, I don't know exactly where that comes from. The history of Japanese whiskey making began with the passion of our founder, Shinjiro Tori. His dream to create a perfect whiskey that reflects the nature of Japan and the spirit of Japanese craftsmanship led Tori to embark on the difficult business of authentic domestic whiskey making that no one had ever attempted at the time. The history of Suntory whiskey and consequently the history of Japanese whiskey were begun by the fearless challenge undertaken Tori, who uh, embarked on whiskey making after prevailing against the op opposition he faced. There's a picture of the distillery in the 30s, and then today, which uh, the one I went to. With his unwavering preference for high-quality water and natural environment that are vital in whiskey making, Tori selected the land of Yamazaki, located at the foot of Mount Tenno-san in southwestern Kyoto, from among, from among several candidate sites. The land had long been famous for its exquisite natural water, which is even mentioned in the Manyoshu, the oldest anthology of Japanese poetry. And he started a distillery, he opened it, oh no, he started construct constructing it in 1923. Yes. Other uh, Japanese whiskey makers are, uh, right now I can only think of one, Nikka, which is the, the one with the, the king, uh, which uh, is also on the, um, there's a big one on the wall in uh, central Sapporo. I wonder if Nikka is from Hokkaido, I'm not entirely sure, but it would make sense because like, I would assume Hokkaido has great water. Taking Tori's dream even further, Keizo Saji, the second president of the company, established Suntory's second distillery in 1973. The location selected was situated at the mount of, foot of Mount Kaiko, Kaiko, Mat, Kaiko Magatake in the southern Japan Alps. And yes, that is in Japan, not Switzerland. Uh, making new types of whiskey that vary from whiskies produced at the Yamasaki distillery had begun at the distillery, which is unique in the world, being located at high altitude in a rich natural environment with Hakshu's purest water. And yes, that gives birth to the other, uh, the, the second in, you, I, could, I would call it the second in their line of whiskies, I, no, maybe third, but anyway, their kind of crown of, of sun, sun three whiskies as I know it, it's, it's the Yamasaki. 
and they have you know they have of course varying years like the highest one I've seen in the AXA games and also in real life is Yamasaki 30 years I think and then you have like 25 and then 12 and then no years at all and then the second in line I would say is the Hibiki I think we will co come to that later and then Hakushu which is has 12 years I don't probably some special edition that has more years but still in 2003, the Yamasaki 12-year single malt whiskey produced at the Yamasaki distillery became the first Japanese whiskey to win the gold medal at the International Spirits Challenge, ISC, the authoritative spirits competition in the world. And the Japanese are quite proud of that. Uh, they continue to win several awards for other whiskies. And in 2010, Suntry be became the first Japanese company to be awarded the title of Distiller of the Year. Ching! Very nice. It goes into a little bit of the creation. Malt whiskey is made from water and barley. We start by germinating and drying uh, carefully selected two-road barley to produce malt. The malt is then finely ground and mixed with water in a mash tun. What's a mash tun? When e where enzymes in the malt break down the starch contingent into sugar. We then slowly filter the mixture to obtain clear, unclouded wort. Wort? Not like the stuff that grows on feet, I hope. And then it's put into these huge-ass wa uh, wooden barrels, uh, wooden and stainless steel washbacks. I don't know what a washback is, but I guess it's this big barrel thing. This yeast, uh, oh, and add yeast. This yeast converts the sugars into the wort in, uh, in the wort into alcohol and carbon dioxide while generating this distinctive flavor components that define whiskey. The fermented liquid that results from this process, called wash, can have many different characteristics depending on the factor, such as the type of yeast used. And Da -de -da -de -da. And then they have the stills, which look like uh, whatever they look like. Uh, they're very distinctive looking, although I can't say exactly what they look like. Maybe some kind of coffee pot or something. Uh, they have one on the outside of the uh, outside of the building, actually. And uh, there's been stories, uh, I saw in Kotaku anyway, there's been a bunch of uh, whiskey shortages recently in Japan. And then they they retired one of the stills to put it outside there like well, 20 years ago or something. And then when now that they're having uh, shortages, they're they're like kicking themselves that they didn't keep using it. But yeah, and they put it into barrels or casks. Uh, they say sherry barrels all the time. I know sherry is a kind of wood. I assume I'm not very good at that. I I know that mahogany is is an expensive kind of wood. Other, I don't know too much about wood. Oh yeah, they put in the barrels and then they start. They go to aging. Of course, the twelve years has been you know aging for twelve years. Uh, however, if, if you buy one that's not an aged and you just have it standing around the bottle for 10 years, does that constitute aging or does it have to be in a barrel? And if you buy cheaper non-aged uh, and you have a barrel at home and you put it in there, does that c count as aging? I don't know. The skill of master blenders brings out a variety of flavors. Now, I think that blending does not mean one of those thing. But yeah, blenders, I guess that's a, a, a person. Um, Anyway, blended whiskey is, as far as I know from a couple of people I know who like whiskey, blended whiskey is not as good as single malt whiskey is the better option. It's more exclusive and stuff. And blended whiskey is cheaper. I know that. I like Ballantine's finest and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Also, the thing of scotch is, uh, it's, it's a scotch whiskey, right? But scotch just means it's from Scotland. I didn't understand that. I thought it was scotch as in just, that was just the name of, I don't know, that's whisk, that's like a different kind of drink or something. Um, yeah. There's also the thing about whiskey and whiskey, uh, the one with E, Y, and the one with just Y after whisk. And I don't know the difference between those, but yeah. And then they have a little bit of how to enjoy whiskey, like you, whiskey and soda makes a highball, whiskey and natural mineral water, half rock, twice up, just a bunch of, uh, oh, okay, it's like half half the glass is whiskey, the other half is water, uh, on the rocks, uh, straight, of course, and then you have a separate glass of water so you can uh, uh, take the edge off or whatever. Pussy! Anyway, um... And it has a little bit of uh, propaganda for whiskey, so to speak. Uh, whiskey is easy on the body, low in calories, low in carbohydrates. This is kind of funny, though. Our aromatic relaxation. The cask aging process produces the characteristically rich aromas of whiskey, as soothing to the soul as a walk through a quiet forest. Okay. So yeah, I walked through this uh, the distillery. It was nice. It had a bunch of uh, stuff. It had this little mini museum. It was nice. Uh, I wanted. Uh, they actually had a gift shop in there. And I was, 
I went there at the time that I was starting to s wanted to conserve my money a little bit, having bought hundreds of games. Uh, so I didn't actually buy. I was going to buy maybe a pen uh, with a Yamasaki. Yeah, like, everything was pretty expensive actually. And buying like a whiskey glass would be kind of stupid because I don't drink anyway. However, because of the Yakuza series and especially like Yamasaki yeah, Twelve Years, I wanted. I was I would I was always in Japan playing with the idea of maybe getting one, like a, a full bottle, you know. But then they cost twenty thousand yen, and I almost never found any. It was really fucking uh, hard to find, and I it was before the actual uh, uh, shortage, and even at the actual uh, distillery, they didn't have it on sale. Seemingly, anyway, when I after I left, someone told me that you had to ask for it, but. During my whole time in Japan, I pretty much saw it at Don Quixote in Okinawa, in Shinjuku, Kabu Kabukicho, Kamurocho. And then I saw it in like a big, uh, big camera or Don Quixote in Kyoto also one time. And I started to see these little mini bottles for like 2,000 yen. It was also very expensive. I thought of buying one of those because, it, you know, it's at least, a, you know, it's something. I didn't actually do that, but then I, I bought a, like a slightly bigger bottle um that had but it wasn't 12 years but then i it was like yeah, okay fine i'll i'll settle with that it's also small enough to easily bring back in my bag and stuff then i went to the ever uh awesome uh, yahoo auctions and started i had looked a little bit before too to look for yamazaki whiskeys all i could find of course was uh, full bottles with uh came in like wooden uh, uh casket no wooden boxes and everything all pristine and nice and expensive however then i found what I did bring home, a bottle of Yamazaki 12 years, except it was empty. Uh, an empty bottle of Yamazaki 12 years for 800 yen, I think it was, uh, with uh, shipping added on top of that, of course. And I could still, there's still like a couple of drops here in the bottom, which I don't plan on drinking because I don't know how old they are, but uh, you can still smell the Yamazaki. But anyway, I have this on display now next to my Goro Majima um, perfume. And yeah, <laughs> this is cool because this is just, you know, a piece of the Yakuza series pretty much, even though it's technically, you know, it's, it's a real thing. But I, I saw it in the game, so it counts as a game thing. That's, you know, I'm strange like that. So yeah, that was my uh, video about the Yamasaki whiskey and distilleries and how it relates to games and me and uh, I drink Yamazaki, you should too.